What's the word, y'all? It is time for our yearly watchability tier list, where I go out on the limb, and before the season starts, tell you this is how much I'm excited to watch certain NBA teams. This is kind of how I predicted it was going to go for me at the beginning of last season, and a, a lot of things changed throughout the course of the year. Right here, you see the Sacramento Kings were in the enjoyable tier before the season started. By the end of the year, they were my most watched team outside of the Chicago Bulls. Obviously, all of this is fluid. For example, the Utah Jazz went from a team I didn't think I was going to watch at all to another team that I watched a ton. Same thing with the OKC Thunder. And for example, the Pelicans on the opposite side. I was so excited to watch them. Zion gets injured, then I watched them a lot less than when he was playing. i also been trying to get in contact with some people. I'm sure a lot of y'all are aware of Spotify wrapped the NBA I've been pitching this for some time the NBA needs their own version an NBA rap that tells you if you got league pass that you watched X amount of games of this team and you didn't watch this team you were there for a Trey Young game winner like they need all of that and they haven't been able to code it yet and I'm so frustrated because I, I mean I don't know anything about coding but I feel like there's a market for it I, I'm the market I'm the target demo that would love to see how many total minutes I've spent in this chair or in the living room watching NBA games. Or maybe not. Because I feel like the number would be so bad that I would look back and be like, did I just waste a bunch of time? I did it. It's my job. All right, let's get into the rankings for this year. First of all, this was last year's video. The vibes in the room used to go crazy. I might have to go back to that eventually. Not right now. So, so here's our tiers. Won't miss a game is a staple. Uh, must see TV is a staple. What's the difference between won't miss a game and must see TV? When I say won't miss a game, that means exactly what it means. I'm going to try my hardest. Of the 82 games this team plays, I'm going to try my hardest to be there for that. And this year, I think this list is more exclusive than previous years. Mostly because I don't have as much time as I used to to sit down and watch every game of every team. So uh, I'll do this right off rip. Even though we hate the Bulls. No, no. We, we love the Bulls. We hate the direction. My fandom trumps all. I will not miss a game for the Chicago Bulls this season. Same thing has happened in baseball. Even though the White Sox suck, I have not missed games. Curse. But that one day that the Bulls are good again, whoo, whoo, I'm going to look back on these bad times and be like, man, look, look at what we do. I was there. I was there when it wasn't great. Even though I might make a video later this week talking about how I think the Bulls might be okay. I, I, I we'll talk about that another day. We got the pretty fun tier, which is exactly what it sounds like. The, hey, man. I, 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 hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully you understand that. And then out early, those are the teams that I feel like I might watch them early on. And then uh, I might not watch them halfway through the season as much as early, okay? Uh, so how do we... I think I'm just going to go from left to right. The 76ers right now are in the A-man tier. I'm starting it like that. Obviously, even with James, without James, they're going to be good enough to make the playoffs. They're going to be good enough to maybe get out of the first round. But after the last couple seasons, they're currently in the A-man tier. Well, I feel like I'm going to watch a ton of them by just being an NBA fan. But I don't know if I classify them. I'm going to classify them as fun or must-watch TV. So they kind of in the the A-man is kind of this mean a bunch of different things. And I'm going to explain it for every team. For the 76ers, they're in the A-man. Out early, watch the Wizards. I'm here to see Jordan Poole maybe average 27 points per game. But I'm out early on them. I I'm going to see them in that, that nice white and blue throwback jersey. I'm going to see Kuz and Jordan Poole potentially hit game winners each. But I am not invested. And I am. this is the first stage of them in the retooling. Oh, I'm sorry. Rebuilding probably. I'm out early on the Washington Wizards. The Atlanta Hawks are an interesting one. Because I was going to make a video where I was talking about the hardest teams to predict. And I might still make that video. Spoiler alert, the Atlanta Hawks are one of those teams that is super hard to predict. I still believe that they're going to be pretty fun regardless if they're good. Regardless if they're good. I trust Quinn Snyder and his ability to put together good offenses. I trust Trey Young as an offensive powerhouse. So I'm going to say that they're going to be pretty fun. The Cavaliers for me is much watch TV. Evan Mobley is one of my favorite bigs to watch in ball. Donovan Mitchell dropped 71 points on my favorite team. Darius Garland is really fun. They are a must-watch TV, and they had a really good offseason, so they should be better. Last year, they won 50 games. I, maybe they aren't going to be better in the regular season, but I feel more confident with them come postseason now, and, you know, obviously things are always changing. The Pistons. Whoo, the Pistons should be... Oh, man, I, I'm going to have to adjust the things because I'm thinking about the Pistons as like a pretty fun team. And now I'm looking at the 76ers beneath them like, wait a minute, Kenny, are you tripping? The reason why I might not put the 76ers in pretty fun because I feel like I've been there for it, you know? 
And this Detroit Pistons team, though they, they won 17 games last season and they probably won't be that much better, I don't have three years of reference. You know, that's how I kind of feel about the 76. Like, I feel like they're going to be good, obviously, but it ain't going to be nothing new. The Pistons have an opportunity to do some new stuff. Kay Cunningham played tw 12, 13 games last season. He's back. I'm going to put them in a... There should be another tier. There should be another tier. Entry. Intriguing. I know that's not how you spell it. That, is, that, is that better? Is that the same thing? I don't know. Maybe I did spell it right. Because that just doesn't look good. It doesn't look right. But my Google said it is. They're in the intriguing tier. I feel like there's a difference between pretty fun and hey man, they're in the intriguing tier with all of their young talent. They got 17 centers on the roster. I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. The Indiana Pacers are a pretty fun to must see. I don't want to put them in must see because it might be just a year early for that, but I'm positive they're going to be a fun team to watch. The Bucks brand of basketball doesn't necessarily make them pretty fun, but Giannis is a Dog, I'm gonna put them in must watch TV still. I'm gonna put them in must watch TV still. Yep, because I, I still believe that Giannis himself is, is a highlight machine waiting to happen. So I'm gonna put them in must watch. The Toronto Raptors are intriguing because I'm ready to see year three Scotty Barnes. I feel like a lot of people are, are done with the Scotty Barnes thing, and I'm not. I'm not going into year number three, I'm super excited about him. Obviously, maybe not the greatest offseason, maybe one of the worst offseasons out of the 30 teams, losing the people that they lost for the thing that they lost them for. But still, I am intrigued. New coach, who is a guy that's all about fluid offense, and the Raptors haven't been a fluid offense in the last couple seasons. They have a lot of intriguing things that's making me put them in that tier. Dallas Mavericks, must-see TV. Interesting offseason. I think all things considered, they had a good offseason. Luka and Kyrie Irving, in the small amount of minutes they played together, was blowing people out of the water offensively, and I feel like that's going to still be the case. So that is must see Denver Nuggets do I need to explain it must see TV again actually I think last year they were here again I have less time to watch every single game so they're definitely must see Grizzlies I'm gonna put the Grizzlies on pretty fun 25 games into it they're not gonna have John Morant once John Morant come back you know exactly what's it but the first 25 games they're gonna be pretty fun still um but but you know the Timberwolves yeah Timberwolves man uh, Anthony Edwards by himself is like this as a whole. I think, oh man, I don't know where I want to go with this. I'll put him in pretty fun. McDaniels will be back. Um, Anthony Edwards is him. I, I like that. The Spurs, at least early on, got to be must see TV for the one man, the, the one guy, one man army type stuff. From just his appearance, he is must see TV, especially in the first couple weeks. Now, after that, if they're still really bad or something. Then I, I, I can see it being, uh, hey man, we respect Wembenyama, but man, right now they're must see. I got him in Utah Jazz. I think I just put him on the intriguing tier. I think they had a decent off season. John Collins added to the fray. Larry Market, most approved player, but I would put them definitely in intriguing. Their lack of guard play or playmaking play, playmaking play, play playmaking players makes them a little bit less than pretty fun, but definitely intriguing. The Clippers are now in the A man. Of course, with the with the Kawhi and Paul George, those dudes are amazing. I would argue both fun in different aspects. Paul George is fun because he gets da da da. Kawhi is fun because he gets to a spot and it don't matter. But will they be playing? How many games are they gonna be playing? Like they're definitely in the A man. The Suns are must see TV because we got to see if this is all gonna work out. I, that's all I got to say. Obviously, the talent is there, but will it work out? As of right now, the Blazers are in the A man tier. You know what? Take it back. They're intriguing. They trade Dane for whatever. Don't even. I didn't even think about Damian Lillard. School Henderson and Shaden Sharp is gonna give you some highlights every every day, every day, every day. But I don't think they're gonna be very g good enough for them to be pretty. I feel like pretty fun. You have to be in a lot of games. I just don't know if the Trailblazers will be in a lot of games again. We don't know what they're getting for Dane. If they depending on what they get, they could change. But right now, I'm gonna put them in, in intriguing. The Kings, since they were my second most watched team last season, I feel like that's going to be the case to start next year. Hopefully they continue what they did, stay healthy again, and have their two-star players play well and not break hands. Uh, DeMont Sabonis broke his hand early. De'Aaron Fox broke his thumb in the playoffs. So just stay healthy, and they're going to be in that tier again. Knicks are intriguing. You know, Jalen Brunson, once he got it together, well, I guess he played the whole season pretty good, but that second half of the year, he really upgraded himself. Playoffs, he upgraded himself. But still, with Tom Thibodeau as a coach, it's, it's hard. Because even when the Bulls were really good and Tom Thibodeau was the coach, and I'm specifically talking about the years that Derek was injured, right? Because when Derek was there, it didn't matter. They were fun. 
But like the years that he was injured and the Bulls were still really good, I wouldn't say they were fun to watch if you weren't a Bulls fan. Now for me, it was great. And I kind of feel that way about the Knicks right now. Pelicans have dropped. They're going to be pretty fun because, you know, until I, until I see some healthy years, some healthy games of Z and Brandon Ingram together, then they're just going to be pretty fun with the possibility of going, at least they have the possibility to be in this tier. They have the possibility. But right now, based on what we know, I'm putting them in pretty fun. The Charlotte Hornets are a probably an early out team. Does that feel fair? I feel like they're an early out team. Brandon Miller, I'm excited to see what he brings to the table. LaMelo is really, really good. But I think they're going to be a team that I'm not watching a ton of this year. The Rockets are 100% intriguing. They got one of the Thompson twins. They spent a lot of money. And they got veterans in the locker room now. This is the thing about the Heat. Because they're, the, the, the Heat brand of ball is inherently not fun. That don't make it good ball. But it's not a fun thing. We don't know what... Are they, if the, they going to have Damian Lillard? Are they not? Are they going to have Damian Lillard or are they not? With, with them not. To... <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I do want to say this again. Amen don't mean I'm not watching. Amen don't mean you're not good. Because look at the teams here. But the Miami Heat's brand of ball is not fun. And that's what we're talking about right now. That don't mean they won't be contenders. That don't mean that they can't win a championship. I'm just saying, amen. It's one of those. I also kind of feel the way about the Brooklyn Nets, you know? Got some players I really like, but I'm not really invested. OKC Thunder's going to be, with Chet back, they're teetering. They're definitely teetering. I'm going to I'm gonna get them in a pretty fun right now with the possibility of going up. The Warriors are always going to be, be must-see TV. Now they got my boy Chris Paul on the roster. I don't care what nobody say. That, that roster is going to be fun to watch regardless. The Boston Celtics are also must-see TV. Uh, especially with the Porzingis acquisition. I like that Porzingis is now in a situation where he can compete for, like, playoff appearances again. I feel like over the last couple seasons, he kind of been there and doing decent stuff, but not good enough to make a run. And obviously with the Boston Celtics, they want to win a championship. I feel like the LA Lakers also are must-watch TV. LeBron is going into year 62. And that's all. I, having LeBron play basketball is all I really need because I'm trying to savor these last couple seasons as much as I can. And then lastly, the Orlando Magic 100% are going to be pretty fun in my opinion. Woof. Oh, man. I already know the comments about this eight man tier. Again, to each his own. You know? Don't mean y'all bad. Don't mean you won't be fun. It's just saying based on what we know right now, no Damian Lillard, maybe James Harden, maybe not James Harden, injuries, and then just... No, what's the Brooklyn Nets reason for me putting them here? I, I don't I, I don't know. I don't know. This is my list right now. Do I want to make any changes? Nah, I'm sure this is going to make some people mad. But let me know. What, what do you agree with? What you disagree with? Tweet me. Your own personal list. I'm always in the Twitter mentions. I want to see. Um, if I wasn't a Bulls fan, hey, man. You know what I'm saying? But I am. So they get the, they get the nod. All right, I'll see y'all soon.